reject idle living. He said this once, he's going to say it again, but he's going to add a word. Verse, chapter 3, verse 11, listen to what he says. For we hear that some among you walk in idleness. You remember idleness is that apathy that I'm just, I'm just here, but I'm not really doing anything. I'm not using my spiritual gift. I'm not engaging the world for the cause of Christ. I don't really you know, seek God with all my heart. I'm just idle. I'm just here. Uh, verse 11, if anyone is, I mean, for we hear that some among you walk in idleness, not even working, if you look at verse 10, but busy at work, but not busy at work, but as busy bodies. Does anybody know any busy bodies? Anybody want to point at one? I'm just kidding. Don't do that. Don't do that. Because if we did that, really, if we did that, what does that cause instantly? Schism. Schism in the body. So, so if someone is idle and, and they become so idle that they become a busybody, that word just simply means they're constantly meddling in affairs of the church or in other people's lives in a negative way that's causing schism. Like, did you hear what happened to you? Bless her heart. <laughs> this is how it'll roll, you know? Or worse trying to undermine the authority of the church, the leadership of the church, trying to cause schism, that will all be work of the enemy. And what Paul is saying, if I were to change it to sort of modern day vernacular, based on everything that we've talked about in these two letters and how important things are, understanding that Jesus will return, if he were to say it our way today, he would say, ain't nobody got time for that. Nobody's got time for that. No idleness, no meddling, no busybodies. We don't have time for that because we are children of the King who is returning. Until then, we stand firm. We make a difference for the cause of Christ and we're not idle. 